Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Fist Sister Just and welcome back to World of Warcraft. In this video we'll be taking a look at the Nighthold raid and how you can actually solo it on Mythic, what you need to watch out for. Because on the Nighthold raid you have uh, the mount the drops, but basically first of all how do you get to it? You go to Suramar. How do you get to Suramar? You go to your uh, faction capital city, Ogrimar or Stormwind. You go ahead, you take the portal to Legion Dalaran. Then from Dalaran you fly on over here to Suramar. In Suramar city you're gonna want to line up like this. As you can see on this little pathway. Then you're gonna be looking at this building. What you're gonna want to do is head straight ahead and enter this pathway over here and head to the right there we go what you're gonna want to do is speed up eliminate these guys don't uh, take a right over there but instead take a right down here then what you're gonna want to do is actually take another left Then you're just gonna want to head to the right here and head down. Usually you can just follow the bodies because people really like to farm this dungeon, uh, this raid, because of the mount. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and open it, make sure your difficulty is on mythic and enter it. Then I will show you all of the bosses, the strategy for them and Basically, if you you can take this, the talisman, of, the talisman of the Sheldorai, which will allow you to skip to the boss, which means more effective farming of the actual uh, of the actual what do you call it of the actual mount, which is why most people farm this. But if you want to farm it out for the first time in order to get to the quest and in order to get the achievements, we're just going to go like this. Basically, clear your way over here to the first scorpions. This over here will be the first boss. The first boss is, isn't anything special. You can basically one-shot it. But I'm going to show it to you anyways. Just so that we are on the same page. There is Scorpion. Now I am 405 item level. I'm just going to charge in. Ba-bam, ba-bam. Ba-bam, ba-bam. And basically you're just gonna want to avoid them. See the Triton is exo exoskeleton, kabam, and he's donezo finished. Next up, daga 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 da daga da. You're going to want to head on all the way to over here. Okay, there we go. Now for the chromatic anomaly. First of all, before you even enter this area, you will need to clear out all of the mobs leading to over here. So that the first Arcan Arcanist, Talisra, can actually go ahead and open this door up for you. And there we go. And there is the Chromatic Anomaly. Now, the Chromatic Anomaly is a bit of a strange boss. Because he has some one-shot mechanics that are quite stupid. But you shouldn't even really see them but in any case we're just going to go up to him and you're gonna want to just dish out more damage before he hits you with anything there we go yeah the time bob is unavoidable but you're gonna want to avoid this there we go and that's basically it you want to burn him down as quickly as possible so you can avoid getting hit by a spell that will actually just one-shot you over time. There we go. These Pulsatrons, if you attack them from the front of their shield, you won't be able to damage them. You have to go behind them. But in any case, now we're just going to move on to Trilex. Now Trilex is also relatively simple, although... I will show you since I'm already recording. I am recording. Good. Trilax is a bit of a, a bit of an oddball. Basically, what you're gonna want to do is take care of the putrid sludge. That over there is Trilax, so watch out. 
There we go. Now that will actually trigger all of the slimes to convalesce into one single being, to join to themselves into this one big slime. Sludge Rex. You're gonna want to basically annihilate Sludge Rex immediately. There we go, and that will trigger Trilex. Now Trilex has essentially lost his mind. Then what you're gonna want to do is just go ahead and attack him. There we go, he's at near at 50%. Avoid the purple and green stuff on the floor. That's, you know, just basic raid mechanics. There we go, loot him. Excellent. Don't loot, uh, don't eat the cake. The cake is uh, rotten. In any case, now we're just going to climb on up and get out of here. Okay, now that we've finished that, you'll have a bunch of these different things that you can actually visit. And essentially, it doesn't matter in which order you do them. I will show you the order which I prefer to do them. But one is think. Spellbinder Aloreal is the next boss that we need to take care of. There we go. Up, 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 up. Bye bye. Nice. Now, we're just going to head on over here to the left. To the Astronomancer's Rise, which is right on over here. There we go. Take care of them. You're gonna want to enter over here. You have all of these celestial acolytes and stuff like that. There you go. And you're going to go over here to the right. Yeah, yeah, shut up, Khadgar. Here is the first boss, the Star Augur at Tararius, however the hell you pronounce the name. There we go. Go ahead, charge him. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. He's going to spew some stuff. He won't really even try to damage you, but he wants to show you a bunch of things. But in all honesty, that's like somebody showing you the pictures of their kids over and over again. Like, dude, I don't care. Just give me my space. In any case, there we go. We've taken care of him. If you check the adventure guide, that's more or less the right uh, sort of uh, sense to uh, go. That is the, <coughs> the order. Next up, we're just going to head on down. And let us just head on over here. We're, we'll actually be heading to the Sheldorite Terrace next. Which is the garden. Right, Astronomer's Rise. We took care of that. I need to collect the cash, hopefully. Oh, brief history of the ends. That's 25 gold, which is nice. Right, over here. Yeah, you can actually go into your travel form or amount, whichever you prefer. And now we're just going to head on. You don't have to clear out the mobs. It's not that sort of fight, you know. Sadly, it won't pull all of the mobs towards you. Which is something that they used to do, which was very cool. But basically, you want to take care of these guys here. As you can see. These are the mobs that you need to take care of. There we go. Then you have these three guys. And it doesn't matter in which order you take them out. I like to go the middle, right, then left. There we go. I've taken care of the middle. Now we're taking care of the right. There we go. Now we're just going to take care of the solarist. Okay, I'm rooted. Whoa. Whoop the fucking do. There we go, and that's it. That takes care of them. Go ahead and loot them, and you'll be unrooted. Now we're just going to go back over here. Okay, now that we, we have taken care of most of the bosses, before we go down to Croesus, we're actually going to go to the captain's quarters to take care of our boss that's over there. So we're just going to go ahead and enter it from here. 
Habibi. There we go. Go ahead and open up this containment field. There we go. Outlander. Auslander. Right. And you're gonna want to... Oh, oh, oh. Right. You're gonna want to head on over here. There should be... No, that wasn't the way. It's actually the opposite way. I get them mixed up sometimes. It happens. But in any case, just go over this way. And everything will be a-okay. So right, now we just head on up here. And up here will be the boss. Just go up the stairs, up the stairs. Okay, I love it when I get stuck. There we go. And there is the Chondrius. Now we're just going to basically burst him down. There are no special... I mean, there are really no special things about him. In all honesty, it's just important that we burst him down. There we go. Nice. Now we're just going to exit on out of here and we're going to go... Fuck off, Kylgar. Okay, right. We'll actually be heading on down to Croesus. Okay, here we are. We're, we are actually near Croesus. Now, it's very important that before you actually head down uh, to confront Croesus, that you be... that you are not in combat. Because if you are in combat, a lot of things can actually bug out. For example, this Searing Infernal, you don't want to ignore it, you want to take care of it. There we go, and you actually do want to head on down. Uh, don't worry, a uh, Cadgar will appear and he'll teleport you up as soon as you're done, so don't worry about that. And I guess here are the three NPCs that we need to eliminate. There we go. Oh no, I'm really afraid of Croesus. Oh my god. There we go, there is Croesus. Now, he will destroy parts of the bridge the longer he's alive. So, as always, you're gonna want to burst him down. When he does that fell beam with his right hand, as you're looking at him, right hand, you're gonna want to move to the left side. When he does it with his left hand, you're gonna want to move to the right side. And that's it. That's the entire logic behind him. If you're not quick enough with your DPS, he will destroy chunks of the bridge down here. Yeah, yeah, shut up. I'm ready. Then he'll actually take you up. Then what you're going to need to do, because we essentially have two more bosses for this raid. Basically just head on up. We'll be entering and attacking the Chrono Lady. Now, what is important for you to know is that you will have to defeat her multiple times. Because she does some time magic stuff. That I'm not quite so sure. But in any case, right click on this orb. Teleport to the Night Spire. And it is by defeating her that you actually get the time warp thing that you need to uh, turn in for the quest to actually just teleport to here without farming the rest of the bosses. So yeah, we're going to need to take care of all of the mobs that are around here. There we go. Okay. They're not very tough, as you might have noticed, so we're just going to... Yeah, you can even auto-attack them, I mean... They're not really that tough. Okay, bam. Bye bye. Okay, and that should trigger the boss encounter. I am recording, I am good. 
Yeah, she goes on about fate, the threads, how she will most likely win, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. Just very boring villain dialogue. Okay, now basically in order to trigger this, you're gonna want to taunt her or just basically do some sort of range attack to bring her down from that pedestal and essentially you're just going to have to burn her down don't pop your cooldowns if you need to pop your cooldowns just yet here you will be frozen in time and she will basically just go back through time there we go and you're going to want to attack her again burst her down basically kabam kabam there we go now the same thing will happen i think that will happen one more time then we'll be able to take care of her no you cannot really ah there we go i believe that's the last one perfect we got the echo of time that is needed for the quest yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in any case, now we will actually head on over here to the terrace. So we can head up. So go ahead and do that. Teleport to the Font of Night. And there is Gul'dan. Basically, what you're gonna want to do is... Okay, no path available. Perfect, let's just... Uh, there we go. You're gonna want to range attack him. And that will start the encounter. And essentially, you're affected with Bonds of Fell. And don't move when you're affected with Bonds of Fell. What you're gonna want to do is just annihilate him. And when he's at about 50%, he will do this. You also have the this barrier here. Which you can do, and then he will actually do this. There you go, and it's very important that you jump, use something, some sort of movement effect, or basically anything that can boost your movement a little bit. There you go. Mm hmm. There we go, and now you will trigger the ne the last phase of the fight, which is this, uh, the demon within, which kind of looks like Illidan. Mm -hmm. There we go, as soon as you can charge, you're gonna want to charge if you have a charge, if not, just hit him with your damaging abilities as soon as he's targetable. There we go. Loot him. Okay. Purifier leggings. Leg wrap of second sight. Meh. High shadow consular wrap. Breastplate and. Meh. It's a bunch of bullshit, I didn't get anything. Fate of Azeroth rests in our hand, and that's basically it. I believe some sort of speech was supposed to be given or something, but... I think I, I kind of broke him? It's quite possible I did, but we're no longer in combat. So if this uh, sort of happens, go to group finder, pre-made group, custom, start a group, name it anything, list group. Right click on your portrait, leave party, and goodbye. You'll be kicked out of the instance in a minute to a minute and a half.